Hi, this is Mrs. Robertson, and today in my fourth period math class, we're going to go over page 105 math boxes. So uh, let's open our books up to page 105 and go over how to get the correct answers on these math boxes. This is located again, page 105. All right. Write each of the following numbers, tenths, hundreds, and you're going to write 76 on the blank, 76 hundreds, 81 and, whenever you see and, you know that's going to be your decimal point. So 81 decimal point, 37 thousandths. Let's draw the blanks for thousands. Tenths, hundreds, thousands. 37. There is an empty blank, and what do you think we put on the empty blank? Zero. Zero. Very nice. On the next one, 453 ten thousandths. Ends in the THS, there's no whole number. No whole number, everything's behind the decimal point. Tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. 453. 453, and you put a zero right there in the empty spot. That is the number 453 ten thousands. Are there any questions? No. Okay. Let's go to box number two. In box number two, we are putting them in order from the smallest number to the largest. Well, they all start with zero. Then the next number, it's a two, a three, a zero, a three. Well, out of those numbers, the zero is the smallest. So it's going to be that number is our smallest. Zero and zero, two, three, or 23 thousandths is your smallest. A two, a three, a three. The two is going to be the next to the smallest. 23 hundredths. Now we have left 32 hundredths and 323 thousandths. Well, if you add another number here, it's 320. 323 is larger than 320. So 32 hundredths is the next to the smallest and the largest is 323 thousandths. Any questions on that? Do, does everyone have this written down? If you are a guest, go get a piece, a half a sheet of paper off the file cabinet and write this down. If you don't have your math journals with you, on top of the file cabinet, get a piece of paper so you can write this information down. Thank you. Now let's do letter B. In letter B, let's look at the numbers. And they all are a 36. The next number is an 8, a 7, an 8, and an 8. Okay, out of those numbers, it looks like the 7 is the smallest. So that's our smallest. Let's write that down. 36 and 783 thousandths. All right. Now we're going to choose the next smallest number, just right on the back side of that. Let's close our Chromebook. There's no need to have our Chromebook open up. Okay. On the next group, let's see. It's going to be an 837. So 36 and 837 thousandths will be our next number. Okay, now we have two numbers left. 878 and 8375. Ooh, 8375 is going to be the next one. 
So it's 36 and 8,375. And then the largest one will be 36 and 878,000. Any questions? Okay. Close it, please. All the way. Vanessa, could you help him? There, thank you. All right, now we're on number three. When you add and subtract decimals, you line your decimal points up. So for letter A, you're going to have $7.22 minus $3.43. Neatly line your decimal points up. Oh, no. Can a 2 subtract a 3? No. Help, help. And the 2 over here says, I'll help you. I'll turn into a 1 and give you 10. 12 minus 3 is 9. Can a 1 subtract 4? No. It needs some help. Help, help. And 7 will turn into a 6, and that makes it an 11. So 11 minus 4 is 7. And 6 minus 3 is 3. So the answer, $3.79. Are there any questions? Now, the next one we're going to add. Again, line your decimal points up. $9.28 plus $2.76. 8 plus 6 is 14. Put down a 4, carry a 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 7 is 10. Put down a 0, carry a 1. 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So it's $12 and 4 cents. Are there any questions? Okay, then we're going to go to number 4. Claudia earns $102 raking lawns for 12 hours. How much money did she earn per hour? Do you think we're going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Yeah. No. I mean, uh, multiply. Not multiply, we'll divide. divide. Mm -hmm. So you're going to divide $102 by 12. That will give you your unit rate. Okay, and so let's do our division box, 102 divided by 12. 12 will go into that, I think, 8 times. 9 is going to be too big, so let's try 8. 12 times 8 is 96. Yeah, 96 will fit underneath there. Put the 8 above the 2. Got to borrow. 2 won't subtract 6. 10 turns into a 9. 12 minus 6 is 6, and it's just going to be a 6. Now, since we're dealing with money, we're going to add a decimal point and a 0. I call them dotty dot zeros. Bring it down. How many 12s are in a 60? Yes, 5. Put a 5 above the 0. Now, we don't say $8.5. We say $8.50. It's in the tens place. $8.50 is how much she makes an hour. Okay? Any questions on that? All right. Now we're going to go and do our worksheet for um, the next class. And I think I need to go get a few extras of these from Mrs. Beck. So um, I'll just take a look at the next class. So I'm going to run off. Close your girl book. Um,
So here we go. You're welcome. Let's see if I forgot to put pause on, didn't I? All right. Now we are back. Sorry about the little delay earlier. So now we're going to do the study guide 2B number 1. All right. The first. How many socks are green and how many socks are blue? Now it tells you draw a tape diagram to represent the problem. Okay, so remember when we did the tape di or the tape diagrams? We have green socks and blue socks. How many green boxes? Five. One, two, three, four. Five. How many blue boxes are we going to draw? Two. Okay. And what's the total number of socks that we have? 28. There are 28. It says there are 28 socks in all. That's, the, that's your total. Now, we have to figure out what to put in each box. Okay. How many boxes are there all together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our total number of boxes is seven. So you're going to have 28 divided by seven, and that will tell you how many to put in each box. What is 28 divided by seven? Yes, four. So you're going to put a four in each box. Now you'll be able to answer the question. How many are green? The G stands for green. The B stands for blue. How many green socks are there? What are five fours? Yes, 20. You have 20 green socks. How many blue socks do you have? Yes, eight. Eight blue socks. Any questions on how to do that? On the test, it'll suggest that you do a tape diagram to help you out on the problems. Can everyone do a tape diagram? Okay, let's go to the next one. The next one is about the fish and bird veterinarian's office. Okay, they see this is a veterinarian who only sees fish and birds. Okay. Noah. Is it Noah or Nora? Alan. You need to go to art. This person needs to go to art. Okay. So we have 15 fish, 25 birds. What's the total number of patients that this veterinarian saw? How many her patients are fish and birds? How many creatures did that veterinarian see? Yes. Uh, 15 plus 25 will give you 40. So the veterinarian saw a total of 40 patients that day. Just take, you know, you'll be back in a little bit. Now it asks, what is the ratio of fish to birds? Well, fish to birds, it's going to be 15 to 25. So let's write that down. 15 over 25. Put it way over here. Now, there are three ways to write a ratio. That's one of them. Then 15 dot dot, that's the colon way, 25. And the last one is 15 to 25. Those are the three ways to write it. Make sure you have that on your paper. Now, on your test, there's going to be at least one problem where they want your simplified answer. So, can 15 over 25 simplify? Is there a number that can divide 15 and 25? Yes. Five. Very good. 
15 divided by 5 is 3. 25 divided by 5 is 5. So we're going to write this other way down. This is the same thing. 3 over 5, 3 to 5, and 3 dot dot 5. Any questions on those? Those are all equivalent ratios. And this is fish to birds. Okay, it's fish to birds. Now let's go to the next one. This one is tricky. It's not fish to birds. It's fish to total. Total is this one here. Fish to total. We already discovered that our total was 40. So it's going to be fish, which is 15 to 40. Now, is that here? 15 to 40? Yes. Circle it. Now, some of them are simplified, or they are equivalent ratios. Let's look at this. Is there a number that can divide 15 and 40? Yes. What is it? Five. Yes. We're going to simplify it. We're going to divide them both by 5. And you're going to get 3 over 8. Hey, is 3 to 8 or 3 over 8 one of those choices? Yes, it is. It's this choice right here. Circle it. 3 to 8. Now let's go through and check all of these to see if there are any others. Can it be can 15 to 40 equal 15 to 25? Does that equal 15 to 25? No. We know it is this one. That one just has one number. That's not going to equal a 25, is it? No. Is 30 over 80 equivalent to 15 over 40? 15 over 40, does that equal 30 over 80? It is because 15 times 2 is 30. 40 times 2 is 80. See how when you put it this way, it's easy to say, oh, they're equal or oh, it's not equal. Does 15 over 40 equal 3 over 5? No, it equals 3 to 8. It's a not equal one. We're not going to circle that one. Does 15 over 40 equal 15 over 25? No. All right. So the three you should have circled are 3 to 8, 15 to 40, and 30 to 80. Are there any questions? Okay, let's go on to the next one. Kids, this one is similar to number one. I want you to do this one, and then I'll give you the answer. I have to take attendance real quick. So I'm going to do that while you try to do number three. And you'll want to draw a tape diagram. Okay, in problem number three, for your tape diagram, you need to have two boxes for the orange, or no, three boxes for the orange. In black. And we have three. And two. It tells us the total number of Skittles is 30. Now we have to figure out what to put into each box. All right. Um, how many boxes are there in this problem, Vanessa? Five. Five. So you're going to have 30 divided by 5, which gives you six. a 6. So let's put a 6 in each box. Now it's pretty easy. How many are orange? What's the answer for that? How many are orange? 6 plus 6 plus 6, yes. 18. Any questions on how to do number 3? Now let's go on to number four. In problem number four, 
It says Joe spent $500 to buy 25 jerseys. Use the ratio table to answer the following questions. Now there is a problem on the ratio table. Instead of hours, draw the word hours, put a line through it, and it's supposed to be jerseys. Jerseys. Let's complete this table. All right. Let's find our unit rate. How much does one jersey cost? You're going to divide. How does a 25 turn into a 1? You divide it by 25. 25 divided by 25 is 1. 500 divided by 25 tells you how much one jersey costs. So let's do this. $500 divided by 25. How many five, 25s are in a 50? Two. So you put a two above the zero. Two times 25 is 50. And the jersey's not $2. Bring down. How many 25s are in that? Zero. So the answer, one jersey is $20. Are there any questions on that? All right. So we need to let you know what we filled in our chart here. Um, four jerseys is $80. One jersey is 20. How do we get 80? One times four is four. 20 times four is 80. And now we're trying to figure out how many jerseys you can get for $750. Well, we took 750, and we are right now in the process of dividing it by 20. And 20 times 3 is 60. Subtract. You have a 15. Bring down. Now, how many 20s are in 150? Yes. 7. That's 140. And you still have 10 left over. Add a decimal point and a 0. How many 20s are in 100? Five. So it's 37.5 jerseys. 37.5. Now let's go answer the questions under the four. Okay? In letter A, what is the price for one jersey? What's the answer? $20. Okay? How many jerseys? Can he buy for $750? How many jerseys? You can't buy a half of a jersey. How many? 37. He can buy 37 jerseys for $750. You can't buy, you can't buy a half a jersey. They're going to make you pay full price for one. What would the cost of four jerseys be? How much will four jerseys be? Yes. $80. Okay. Any questions? All right. Let's go on to the next page, the back side. On the back side, we have a 2022 Chevy Corvette. Traveled 168 miles using 8 gallons of gasoline. What is the unit rate for miles per gallon? Okay, we are doing 168 miles on 8 gallons. We want to get it over a 1. Well, you're going to divide by 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. So 168 divided by 8 will give us our mystery number. 168 divided by 8. 8 goes into 16 two times. Subtract. Bring down. 8 will go into 8 once. So the answer, 21. So what is the unit rate for miles per gallon? 21 miles per gallon. Now, it wants to know what does the unit rate represent? 21 miles 
on one gallon of gas. That's what that means. 21 miles per gallon means you can travel 21 miles on one gallon of gas. Can everyone remember that for the test on Thursday? No. Gotta try. Let's go on and do the next one. How many gallons of gasoline would the Corvette need to travel 210 miles? How many gallons of gasoline would the Corvette need to travel 63 miles? And the last question, if the gas tank on a Corvette holds 18 gallons of gas, how many miles can the Corvette travel? Draw a ratio table to help you. Let's draw the ratio table. And the ratio table is about miles and gallons. So let's put miles and gallons. Okay. Well, let's go back up to the beginning of the problem. The Corvette can go 168 miles on 8 gallons of gas. We have already know that, right? We found the unit rate. It can go 21 miles on 1 gallon of gas. Now let's figure out what we can do for these two. 210 miles. That goes with the miles, right? 63 miles. That goes with the miles. And the last one, 18 gallons. Does 18 go on top or will 18 go on bottom? On the bottom. Okay, and then we just have some extra space there. Now I want you to go ahead and fill those out. And then I will uh, give you the answers in just a minute. So try to figure out what the answers are. Okay, let's see what our answers are. Jackson, how can a 21 turn into a 210? What do you multiply it by? Yes. Put times 10. Draw your arrow. So, 1 times 10 is 10. On 10 gallons of gas, the Corvette can travel 210 miles. Now, Ooh, 63. Can 21 turn into a 63? How many times? Yeah, three. That's right. 21 times 3 is 63. So 1 times 3 is 3. So 3 gallons of gas, you can go 63 miles. Okay, Levi, what color of a Corvette are we dealing with here? Red. No, I asked Levi, what color do you think? Uh, a gray. A gray? Is it the metal gray or is it a metallic gray? Metallic. Okay, metallic gray. What kind of rims does the Corvette have, Jackson? Spinning ones. Oh, who said spinning ones? All right, Theodore wants spinning ones. Can you wait just a moment? We want to get this done, and then I'll say yes. Um, all right. Anything else you need to know about the Corvette? It's an electric Corvette. Do they make electric Corvettes? Uh, I don't think they do. Okay. Let's finish this off. Huh. Oh, a 1 can turn into an 18. Or, hey, can 3 turn into an 18? Yes. 3 times 6. 3 times 6. We can do 3 times 6 is 18. So 63 times 6 will give us our answer. 378. Now, you could have gotten the same answer if you take 1 times 18. You could do 1 times 18. And if you take 21 times 18, you will also get 378.
Yep, you get 378. Either way will give you the answer. Now, let's answer the problems up here in the questions. We'll wait for everyone to get back to their seats. All right. How many gallons of gasoline would the Corvette need to travel 210 miles? How many gallons of gasoline will they need? Use the ratio chart. What did you get? 10. 10 gallons. How many gallons of gasoline would the Corvette need to travel 63 miles? Yes. Three gallons. If the gas tank on a Corvette holds 18 gallons of gasoline, how many miles can the Corvette travel? How many miles? Yes. On that one, 378 miles. Any questions? Now, do not lose this worksheet. This is going to help you on tomorrow's homework or classwork. And then I have another worksheet for homework. So the classwork is going to be a worksheet like this tomorrow that we want you to do. Now, so save it at the bottom. We have five minutes. I want you to draw pumpkins. I want you to make some pumpkin drawings.